and telling the story of Jesus Christ. Pastor Benny Hinn was recently in England to minister at Morris Cirillo's mission to London. Speaking in the vast arena at Earl's Court, he shared on the cross of Jesus Christ. Today and tomorrow, you'll hear this most important message, which every Christian must take to heart if they are to live a life which will be both pleasing to God and an effective witness for the gospel. I've asked the Lord that I would do two things for him from now till the day he takes me home. One, that I would win the lost, that I would continue to preach the gospel, bringing souls to the cross. And secondly, that I would be used to strengthen the body of Christ in this hour. That's what I pray with all my heart. And the Lord has brought back to my life and brought back to my heart a truth that I heard when I was saved and how that truth burned in my soul then and how this truth is burning with greater fire today. The throne of the universe is the cross of Jesus Christ. For the cross of Jesus is the seat of all authority. The cross of Jesus is the seat of all power. The cross of Jesus is the seat of victory. The cross is the throne of heaven. The cross is the throne of the universe. The Word of God presents this message to us from Genesis to Revelation. The cross is the only place of safety. The cross the only place of protection. The cross and only the cross is the place of glory. Jesus said in Matthew, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? If any man will come after me, if any man will follow me, let him deny himself. The denial of self is the message that God is burning in my heart. The denial of self is the cry of the Spirit to the church. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The cross is the symbol of death. The only people with genuine authority over Satan, the devil, the only people with genuine power over the demons of hell are those who have chosen the cross, are those who are allowing the cross to deliver them from self. Luke 14, 26, Jesus said, as he said in Matthew 16, 24, he says it again in Luke. If any man come to me 
and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, children, brethren, sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Cannot. He cannot be my disciple. Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He repeats that twice in verse 26 and 27. And verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Verse 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if that salt will lose its savor, it's good for nothing. People of God, one of the most amazing portions in the Word of God is John 12, beginning at verse 20. There were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at Jerusalem at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus, and Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come. The Son of Man should be glorified. The Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He explains that by saying, Now he that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am there also shall my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. This blessed truth is throughout the Gospels and the Epistles, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. I want every believer here to know Satan, who knows this truth, will offer you a crossless life, for he knows the moment you are on that cross, he will lose you. The moment you are on that cross, he cannot touch you. The moment you are on the cross, no demon can harass you. For the cross is the place of protection from demonic harassment and demonic power and demonic activity. On the cross there is peace and protection. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When Jesus came to earth, the first thing Satan did is come and offer him a crossless life. In Matthew chapter 4 he said, I will give you the world. I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. You do not have to gain the throne through the cross. I'll give you the throne without the cross if you'll only fall and worship me. Satan offered Jesus, our Redeemer, a crossless life and said, if you'll just worship me, I'll give you the world. You do not need to go to the cross to gain the throne. 
I'll give you the world. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. But the devil does not give up. He came a second time in Matthew 16 and used Peter the apostle. When Jesus said, I'm going to the cross, Satan spoke through Peter and said, not you, Lord. Not you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. For he recognized the voice of the devil using an innocent man like Peter the Apostle. And there we see Satan coming the second time, offering Jesus a crossless life. And now the Son of God is hanging on that cross, feeling the pain and the agony. The Son of Almighty God, having lost strength, the Son of Almighty God hanging and bleeding on that cross. But Satan, the devil, doesn't give up. Even in that moment, just before the glorious victory of Calvary, Satan comes back for the last time in Matthew 27 and says, If you are the Son of God, come off that cross. Even in that last moment, Satan is still offering Jesus a crossless life. But thank God, our Redeemer has won the victory. And said, it is finished. My brother, my sister, Please hear what I'm telling you now. There isn't one way for the Lord and another way for you. There's not one way for him and another way for us. He said, if any man will come after me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. If any man will be my disciple, let him pick up his cross you cannot be a disciple of Christ Jesus without the cross of Christ Jesus. Jesus said in John 12, Verily, verily, I say to you, verse 24, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. And then he explains what he said by telling you, he that loveth, he that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Satan is a determined enemy and understands the power of this message and this truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the first word of the gospel is the word repent. The word repent begins the process of death in a believer. The word repent begins the process of death. Death to the flesh, death to self, death to the old man. The denial of self begins when you repent. Now, please understand also, the moment you die, the moment you begin to die, you also begin to live. For the process of death and the process of life begin at the same time. 
when you repent at the moment of salvation, a part of you dies. You see, what you have got to understand is a born-again believer is not totally dead. Even after that believer is filled with the Spirit, much of him is still alive. But the process of death begins at salvation. And at that moment, Life also begins in that one. For faith is imparted to the man who begins to die. The faith of God takes hold of that part of you that is dead. He begins to fill that part of you which is empty of self. And you climb, you begin to climb your own Golgotha. You begin to climb your own hill of Calvary. And the moment you make that decision, the moment you say to Jesus, I will follow you, I will follow you to the end. Yes, Lord, I will give all and I will surrender all. The moment you make that commitment, a cry will arise in hell against you. The devil will unleash all his demons against you. And what he offered Jesus, he will offer you. He will offer you the world. He will offer you the wealth of the world. He'll offer you fame and riches. He'll offer you popularity. He'll offer you everything this world can give you to prevent you from climbing that hill. And along the way as you pursue the cross, He will send you men and women interfering in your commitment He'll send you a Peter. He'll send you a family member. He'll send you someone from church. He'll send you some relative. He'll send you some close friend. He'll even send you some trusted friend who'll say, no, 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 this is not for you. This is not for you. Don't begin to give up this. Don't give this. And don't give up this. No, this is not. And they'll try to argue you out of your commitment. They'll try to convince you that the Christian life is not a life of death. They'll try to tell you that the Christian life is something altogether different than what the Bible says. But my brother, understand that Jesus Christ never once said, here's how you succeed in business. Never once did Jesus say, here's how you make money. Never once did Jesus Christ say, here's how to look good and feel good. Here's how to maintain your emotional state. And here's this. And no, my brother, Jesus said, if you will be my disciple, there's only one thing I ask of you. You got to deny yourself and follow me. The cross is the throne of the universe, like you heard today. When we come to that cross, self will die, self will be canceled, and Jesus will live. Victory and power will be ours then because of the cross. Make sure to get this whole message from London. When I shared this message, the power of God was mighty, and I know it was mighty today. And remember, He loves you. Dear Jesus, let's pray. Dear Jesus. Touch that one, I pray today. For the power of the Holy Ghost will rest upon that life. Bring healing, bring deliverance. Bring strength today, Lord, for your name's sake. Deliver that one from oppression, from bondage, from sickness and pain. In the name of Jesus, 
heal and set that one free. I give you praise. If you do not know the Lord, the greatest miracle is salvation. Pray this after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe you came to earth. And I believe you died for me on a cross. And I believe you shed your blood for me. Forgive my sin, precious Lord. For I believe you rose from the dead. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I surrender my life to you right now. Amen and amen.